Inaanyayahan ko po na tumayo ang kapulungan sa pagbasa ng teksto na pagbabatayan ng preaching ngayong umagang ito. The Old Testament reading is found in Genesis 12, 1-5a. At doon po sa New Testament, Hebrews 8, Hebrews 11, sorry, Hebrews 11, 8, to 11 and 13 to 15. Narito po ang salita ng ating Panginoon. Genesis 12, 1 to 5a. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. And I will make of you a great nation and I will bless You and make your name great, so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and him who dishonors you, I will curse. And, and in you all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went as the Lord has, had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old. When he departed from Haran, and Abram took Sarai, his wife, and Lot, his brother's son, and all their possessions that they had gathered, and the people that they had acquired in Haran, and they set out to go to the land of Canaan. Hebrews 11, 8 to 11, and 13 to 15. By faith, Abraham obeyed when he was called to go out to a place that he was to receive as an inheritance. And he went out, no, not knowing where he was going. By faith, he went to live in the land of promise, as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him of the same promise, For he was looking forward to the city that has foundations, whose designer and builder is God. By faith, Sarah herself received power to conceive, even when she was past the age. She is considered him faithful who had promised. All this, this all died in faith. not having received the things promised, but having seen them and greeted them from afar, and having knowledge that they were strangers and exiles on the earth. Verse 14, for the people, for people who speak thus make it clear that they are seeking a homeland. If they had been thinking of that land from which they had gone out, they would have had opportunity to return. May the Lord bless the reading of His Word. Sumandali po tayong yumoko at tayo po ay manalangin. Heavenly Father, open the mouth of Thy servant and fill it with Thy wisdom and knowledge that I may boldly proclaim Thy Word in all its purity. Prepare our hearts to receive it to understand it, and to preserve it. Inscribe thy law as thou hast promised upon the tablet of our heart and give us the desire and the strength to walk in the ways of thy precepts. To the praise of thy name and to the edification of the church, all this, gracious Father, we implore in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Muli po ay magandang umaga at and happy Lord's Day sa lahat. Ang atin pong sermon na akin pong iyahatid sa inyo ay mula doon sa sermon ni Pastor or Reverend Nolly Malabuyo noon pong July 9, 2023. So mag-iisan na po this year. At ang, pinamagat, ang pamagat nito ay The Church, part 3. Part mula po ito doon sa labing dalawang 
sermon series na kanya pong hinanda at ipinreach doon sa Big Springs Church doon po sa California. At ang title po ay The Church, yung part 3 po, Foreigners Desiring a Better Country. Mga kapatid kay Kristo, ito po ay ang, sabi ko nga, ay ang katlong sermon na nakapaloob sa serye ng sermons patungkol sa biblical, theological, at historical na aspeto ng iglesia o ng church. Sa serye pong ito, ating matutunghayan ang iba't ibang pangalan na ginamit ng Biblia sa usapin pang iglesia. Ilan sa mga itinawag sa church ay yung Redeemed of Israel. Tinawag din po itong Zion, Vineyard of the Lord, Temple of God, His Flocks, at ang Bride of Church or yung Bride of Christ. The first in the series was na atin din pong narinig ng mga nakaraang linggo, The Church, Gardeners and Guardians. An exposition of the Garden of Eden as God's temple and Adam and Eve, yung first church. Sila ay inatasang gampanan ang paggawa at pangangalaga ng halamanan bilang pangunahing tagapangasiwa. Inatasang magtrabaho sa ikasasagana ng lupain at upang mapangalagaan din na hindi makapasok dito ang kasamaan. Naka nila namang hindi natupad nung hindi nila naitaboy si Satanas palabas ng Eden. The second in the series was the church, ship builders and life savers na ito'y natunghayan natin last week. Ito naman ay ang aralin patungkol kay Noah at ang kanyang sambahayan bilang isang iglesia at ang ark o yung barko na nagliktas sa kanila ay bilang si Kristo. Today, we will meditate the church, foreigners desiring a better country. Na kung saan ating pagninilayan ng buhay ni Abraham, ni Sarah, at ni Lot bilang mga dayuhan o mga tagaibang bayan at manlalakbay sa mundo na nagnanais na maging mamamayan ng isang mabuting bayan. Ang bayan sa kalangitan na kung saan ang nagdesenyo, nagplano, at nagtayo ay ang Diyos. Therefore, our team in this Lord's Day is the Church, Foreigners and Desiring a Better Country na mayroong dalawang sermon points. Ito po ang una, Foreigners on Earth, na inyo ring mababasa sa inyong mga liturgy. And the second team or heading is the Citizens of Heaven. Brothers and sisters, God first called Abraham in Genesis 12 verse 1. Ang sabi po dito, Go from your country and your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. Sa so Genesis 11, kung ating babalikan, si Abraham at ang kanyang ama na si Tera at ang buong sambahayan ay umalis ng bayan ng Ur na sa panahon ngayon ay matatagpuan doon sa katimugang Iraq upang magpunta sa Kanaan o sa Canaan na may na halos may isang libong milya pakanluran ang layo mula doon sa Ur. Ayon sa mga archaeological findings, ang Ur ay isang mayamang syudad. May mga produktong maganda ang pagkakagawa at ito ay sentro ng teknolohiya sa panahong iyon. Sa hindi maipaliwanag na dahilan si Abraham, ay nanirahan sa siyudad ng Haran o ng Haran na anim na daang milya naman pahilaga ang layo na sa ngayon ito ay yung Southern Turkey. Makikita natin sa aklat ng mga gawa, chapter 7, nababasa natin ang pahayag ni Stephen patungkol sa utos ng Diyos kay Abraham na pumunta sa ilang na lugar habang siya ay nasa Ur. 
na sinasabi, The God of glory appeared to our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he lived in Haran. Walang reklamo at pakikipagtalo ni Lisan niya ang kanyang pamilya at ang kanyang kinalakihang bayan. Sa Genesis 12.4, mababasa natin na siya ay sumunod sa Diyos at nilisan niya ang bayan ng Haran o ng Haran. Abraham believed God's promises in Genesis 12.1-3. to Dalawa po yung promises na ito na ating matatagpuan sa Genesis 12.1-3. to Ang una, ang sabi po ay, I will make you a great nation. But the preacher says, there was a problem with both of them. At hindi nabasa that Abraham was as good as dead. At si Sarah naman ay matanda na, past her age. But Abraham and Sarah, though after 11 years na mayroon silang doubt sa promises ng Panginoon, still believe that God would give them. Ang sabi ay, yung descendants as many as the stars of heaven and as many as the innumerable grains of sand by the seashore. At ang ikalawang promise doon sa Genesis 12, 1-3 ay, All the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. In Galatians 3.16, Also, Paul says that the promises were made to Abraham and his descendants through Christ in whom multitudes from all nations became Abraham's children, heirs of the promise made to him. That was in Galatians 3.29. Lahat ng Hudyo at Hintil na gaya natin ay mga anak ni Abraham. sa pananampalataya kay Kristo bilang tagapagligtas. Another part of the promise to Abraham is that all peoples would bless through him, would be blessed through him. This promise was everything to do with the church, God's people today, at hindi yung Israel. Christians will be blessed, other Christians, and unbelievers will be enemies of believers. So when Abraham reached Canaan, what did he do? Sa verse 9, makikita po natin, by faith, Abraham went to live in the land of promise as in a foreign land, living in tents with Isaac and Jacob, heirs with him, the same promise. So yun po yung ating text na ating binasa kanina sa New Testament. Mahirap para sa kanila o sa kanyang sambahayata lisanin ang mayamang lupain ng Ur at ng Heran. Lalong mahirap na manatili sa isang foreign land at man- manirahan doon sa tolda or doon sa tent na gaya ng ginawa ni Abraham. Kung aking maaalala, dati po nung malit pa ang CCRC, makailang ulit pong nagdaos ng camp ang ating church sa Tagaytay. Minsan po ay buwan ng Pebrero na napakaginaw. Kami po ay nagtayo doon ng tent at doon kami natulog ng isa hanggang dalawang gabi. Isang magandang experience na siguro ay ma- maaari din nating gawin in the future. Pero kung ikaw po ay maninirahan sa loob ng tolda ng mahabang panahon, hindi po yata marahil kaaya-aya na yon. Napaka uh, hirap gawin na tumigil o manirahan sa isang tolda for the rest of your life. Pero si Abraham live in that tent habang siya ay nabubuhay. Pero bakit nagawa ni Abraham Ang kan- at ito ng- at ang kanyang sambahayan. Ang kasagutan po ay doon sa verse 10 na nagsasabi, sapagkat siya'y umaasa sa lunsod na may mga kinasasaligan. At ang nagplano 
at ang nagtayo ay ang ating Panginoon. Ang nag-iisang lupa na kanyang pagmamayari, wa, alam niyo po ba kung ano, ay yung puntod ng kanyang asawang si Sarah. Ito ay according dun sa Genesis 23. At wala nang iba. Though he lived in the land of Canaan, he lived in tents with his family. He lived a different life from his neighbors. He worshipped one God, the Creator in heaven, not many man-made gods. His life was based on God's law, not man-made laws. His life was a life that Paul calls, ayon dun sa Romans 12, non-conformed to this world, but transformed by the renewing of his mind through the Spirit. He was a foreigner, an alien, a stranger, and a sojourner and exile, according to 1 Peter 1 verse 1. And 17 At saka po dun sa verse 2, verse 11. And the pilgrim through this barren land, a land with God, where God does not pour out His spiritual blessings except to Abraham and his household. Mga kapatid, bilang mga Kristiyano, tayo din po ay mga dayuhan, estranghero, nakikitira at manlalakbay lamang sa mundong ito. In this world, we are surrounded by all kinds of ungodly people who are apathetic to our God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the scriptures, if not hate them outright. When Abraham made his pilgrimage from Ur to Canaan, the church was made up of himself, his wife Sarah, and his nephew Lot. During their sojourn in Canaan, their lives were marred by oppositions from the sinful world. Dalawang powerful men ang kanilang na-encounter sa padahon na yon. The Pharaoh of Egypt and Amibelech, the king of Gerar, had sinful desires. kay Sarah. Kaya po si Abraham ay napilitang magsabi ng half lie o yung kalahating totoo at kalahating hindi na si Sarah daw ay kanyang kapatid. Of course, this half truth, this is a half truth kasi po si Sarah naman ay talagang half sister ni Abraham. Then, ang ikalawang powerful men ay yung men of Sodom wanted to break down the doors of Lot's house to commit sexual immorality with men na nagbibisit sa panahon na yon kay Lot. Ang mga churches po ngayon ay napapaligiran din ng mga makabagong kultura na minsan ay hindi natin naakalaing mag exist Ang paglitaw ng mga moderno at progresibong sexual cultures Gaya ng kung tawagin ay LGBTQ or yung transgenderism at iba pa. Ang mga at ang mga nakakabahala ay ito ay niyayakap din ng ilang mga so-called Christian churches. Evil men and culture surrounding us is not the only cause of trouble in the church. Troubles can also come from a sinful selves. How did Lot end up in Sodom? It was because of the abundance source of water and grassland na suitable para maging pastulan doon sa Sodom. It was all about the water rights and the grazing rights that he had. Both Abraham and Lot had great flocks of and herds and that the land could not support them. So the land chose to the closest to the city particularly ay yung Sodom. Abraham gave Lot the first choice and Lot's mindset was earthly. Pinili ni Lot 
yung Sodom. Even when, mo, when he most likely knew that the men of Sodom were wicked, great sinners against the Lord, according to Galatians 13.13. Lot was overcome by the desires of the flesh and the desires of the eyes and the pride in possessions. 1 John 2.16. Mga kapatid, as believers and as a church, especially as a new church like us, we must guard against these material desires and pride. We might not have a big or beautiful worship building full of people, but God does not regard outward appearances and numbers. Nakatuon po ang Diyos sa mga bagay na ito. Ang puso at kaisipan na may mapagpasalamat at may kagalakan na sa anumang pangyayari sa buhay. Ang puso at kaisipan na nananabik sa dalisay na salita ng Diyos na maipahayag at maituro mula sa mga tapat na mga ngaral. Ulitin ko po, ang puso at kaisipan na may mapagpasalamat at may kagalakan na sa anumang pangyayari sa buhay, ang puso at kaisipan na ito ay nananabik sa dalisay na salita ng Diyos na maipahayag at maituro mula sa tapat na mga ngaral. That worship according to God's word alone and that are united, not skillful or eloquent minister, but in one body, one spirit, one hope, One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God, the Father. According to Ephesians 4, 4-6. At dito ipinakita ng asawa ni Lot ang trahedya na kanilang tinamo dahil hindi, sa hindi pagbitaw ni Lot sa kanyang material desires and pride. An incident in the life of Abraham had a striking parallel also to the most major events in the Garden of Eden. After the serpent tempted Eve, na ito'y alam natin, Eve gave the forbidden fruit to Adam, to Adam. So he also ate the fruit. When God confronted them, the age-old blame-shifting started. Adam blamed Eve for giving the fruit to him. Likewise, Eve blamed the serpent. In case of Abraham, Sarah offered her servant Hagar to him so that he could bear a son for him. And Abraham willingly accepted her offer. After Ishmael was born of Hagar, and Hagar had contempt For Sarah, Sarah blamed Abraham for her troubles. Like Adam and Eve, both, Adam, both Abraham and Sarah had sinned. Abraham listened to the voice of Sarah in Genesis 6.2. And Adam, in, in effect, also listened to Eve's sinful offer. Both of them took God's promises into their hands, doubting hearts, and had a disastrous consequence. At ano po yung consequence na ginawa na ito ni Abraham? Na ang mga lahi ni Hagar ay patuloy na may pag-aalitan at hindi pagkakasundo sa mga lahi ni Abraham maging hanggang sa mga panahon na ito. These two incidents characterize the church from the very beginning. Troubles arises often from inside the church. Sila po yung mga false teachers, false prophets, and heretics. Have been around in the old covenant Israel and in the new covenant. The early church 
from the first six or seven centuries was beset by heretical teachings so that councils were called. Kaya nga po, mayroon tayong creeds and confessions. Ito ay naisulat upang maiwasang magkaroon ng division sa church. This situation is still in the church today. Maraming mga tao ngayon sa church ay nakikinig lamang sa mga sinasabi ng mga false teachers na may hawak na Biblia sa kanilang kabilang kamay at ang kanilang mga material na kayamanan naman ay naandoon sa kabilang kamay. But troubles in the church does not end in false teachers. Many in the church listen to ministers who divide the church because of, ang isang example po dito ay yung their heavy-handed leadership, bad decisions resulting from unwise counsel. At minsan nakalulungkot, they are preaching from the internet. Totoo po. Yun pong paggamit ng tinatawag na artificial intelligence or yung AI ay laganap na din po particular sa paggawa ng sermon. Kaya po, kayang gumawa ng isang sermon, ang isang pastor sa tulong ng app or ng application sa loob lamang ng ilang segundo. Christianity Today concluded, o yung magazine na kilala naman natin maging sa buong mundo, concluded that a chatbot or yung isang app na patungkol sa paggawa ng, ng sermon no? o ng iba pang mga bagay, a chatbot can research, a chatbot can write, a chatbot can also orate or maglahad at magreport. But a chatbot cannot preach. However, even when Abraham doubted God's promises, with its dire consequences, he was a faithful and obedient man of God all the way to the end. He fought against the sinful culture surrounding him because he was looking forward to God's heavenly country. Doon po nakatoon ang kanyang kaisipan. We too must be counter-cultural in a way, in this world, but not of this world. He was truly set apart by God to be holy and righteous, different from the godless world around Him. May we reflect this set-apartness by our mindset and our behavior among our unbelieving neighbors, mga kapatid. So they too would ask why we think we behave so differently from them. Nagaya ng binabanggit sa 1 Peter 3.15. The, ch- the church then and now is God's chosen people who live on this earth, surrounded by a sinful, godless world and culture and desiring to live in an eternal better country. Kaya nga po, mga kapatid, sa second point na atin pong pagbubulay-bulayan, we have the citizenship and that is in heaven. Abraham obeyed because of God's promise of a land but ultimately his gaze was heavenward. He was looking forward to a city that has foundations whose designer and builder is God. And his desire was a better country that is a heavenly one. The heavenly city is a new heaven and new earth according to Revelations 21 verse 1 to 2. Its foundations are the teachings of the 12 apostles of Christ and his prophets according to Revelation 21 verse 14 and Ephesians 2 20. But the main foundation 
is Christ himself, the chief cornerstone of the church. Ephesians 2.20 As the hymn says, the church's one foundation is Christ, Jesus Christ, her Lord. God is the only designer and builder of the church. He at has the same time an architect, an engineer, a building contractor of the church. If not if God is not the foundation, if God is not the designer and the builder and the at, at ang nagpe-preserve sa church, then it is not a church. Although we are citizens of our earthly countries, we desire and look forward to a better citizenship in a better country where we live and dwell with God forever. All people in the country will be of one faith. All the people in that country will be of one Lord, one mind, and all will be in a perfect communion with God and with one another. No more conflicts within God's people and no more sufferings, persecutions, and death. No more living in tents and campers. There were would don tayo darating o pupunta. We are no longer aliens or strangers or sojourners or pilgrims, but a full-fledged citizens of heaven. Bagamat tayo ay mga mamamayan ng bayan na ito, tinitig na natin yung ating dakilang bayang ipapamuhay matapos tayo ay lumisan sa bayan na ito. Yon ay ang langit o ang kalangitan na nagaantay sa mga hinirang ng ating Panginoon. Like Abraham, all true believers must look forward to their final home. God's holy and heavenly city. God also calls us to live like Abraham. Gaya ng kanyang gidawa doon sa kanyang earthly pilgrimage. But our ultimate gaze must always be our eternal residence. The heavenly city according to Hebrews 11.9. True, though we live in our own homes, in our own cars, with our earthly possessions, we must acknowledge that all of these are temporary and are passing away. That was 1 John chapter 2, verse 16 to 17 says. We are dual citizens of heaven first and citizens of our nation second. As you think of your life as pilgrims through this barren land, Colossians 3, 1 to 2 exhorts us, ang sabi po doon, if then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind on the things that are above and not on the things that are on earth. We are often too occupied and too focused on the cares, thorns, and thistles of our earthly existence. Rather, we, we are to look heavenward because everything on earth will be of no value. Only things that are above matters in eternity. Again, in Romans 8, 5, Apostle Paul reminds us, for those who live according to the flesh, set their minds to the things of the flesh. But for those who live according to the Spirit, 
set their minds on the things of the Spirit. Sa panahong kagaya nito na tayo ay nananambahan sa Diyos, we are transformed from earthly pilgrims to heavenly citizens. In this great reversal, all unbelieving citizens of the world become the foreigners, the aliens, the strangers. While we who worship the true God now are changed into permanent citizens of a better, holy, and heavenly country. We have the foretaste of heaven, mga kapatid. So brothers and sisters, Peter says that we Christians are sojourners and exiles in this world. We are temporary residents of this world and exiles in a foreign country. We must fully participate in the civil, social, and cultural life of the cities and nations. We have no enduring earthly city, but citizens of heaven. Therefore, we are dual citizens of two kingdoms, the earthly kingdoms of man and the heavenly kingdom of God. But our ultimate citizenship is in heaven. So we also see ourselves as only sojourners, exiles, aliens, and strangers in this world. Yamang natutunan natin na ang kaharian ng Diyos sa lupa ay ang iglesia o yung church. Atin pong tandaan ang mga salitang ito. That we are to participate in the life of the church. That we are commanded to assemble together every Lord's Day for worship. We are to be united in one Lord and one faith. And we have to obey God's commandment. And we have to repent whenever we sin to hear the word of God read and preach. To partake of the sacraments. To pray for the church, for one another, and for our civil authorities. And to use our spiritual gifts for the building of the church. To guard the church from all false teachings, from errors and divisions, and to live godly and holy lives. And lastly, to witness to the world, proclaiming the gospel, the good news of salvation in Christ to those around us. Tayo pong lahat ay manalangin. Dakilang Panginoon, Salamat sa katotohanan ng iyong binigay patungkol sa iyong iglesia na ikaw ang siyang nagtataguyod at patuloy nagpe-preserve sa iyong iglesia dahil ikaw ang nagplano, naging arkitekto nito at gumawa nito para sa iyong mga hinirang. May you continue to give us the edification bilang mga mananampalataya sa iyong iglesia. na kami ay patuloy na lumago sa pananampalataya, sa kaisahan, sa pag-ibig, at sa pananampalataya at sa kaalaman na nagmumula lamang sa inyo. Sa ngala ng aming Panginoong Yesus, na aming Panginoon na tagapagliktas. Amen.